This is Declan. He is a domestic black, short-haired manx. About nine or ten days ago, he began losing movement of his back legs. At that time, I saw an online video of Declan struggling to play with his siblings. I was saddened by this and wanted to see if I could build something to help him. I quickly began designing and 3D printing a prototype using a pair of Lego wheels from an unused robotics kit. Unfortunately, his condition got worse and he has lost some mobility in his front legs as well. In this video, it's my first time meeting Declan, his foster mom Nadine, and Mark volunteer Dina. We had to make some adjustments due to a change in his condition. Keep watching to see what we came up with. If you don't mind, please go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Dina DeMarco. Nadine McConkey. How long have you been a MARF volunteer? A uh, little, just about three years. Three years? Mm -hmm. Six years. Six years. And uh, are there any particular animals that you like to bring in or all animals, cats, dogs? Or? I, I specialize in, in kitten critical care, kittens with, with like a high risk of not making it and oh. uh, lots of colds and things like that. So. I try to take care of the, the high risk ones and primarily kittens because I also have cats of my, of my own so kittens get along better with them. Can you tell us a little bit about Declan's condition? Yes, um, so about nine, 10 days ago, um, Declan's foster mom noticed that he wasn't using his back legs. So um, she took him into the vet and at the time their first uh, suspicion was something that's called Manx syndrome. Okay. Uh, Manx syndrome, he is a Manx, he has a bobtail, so he, he has the Manx gene. Um, so obviously put two and two together, that's, that's most likely the source. And it still very, very well might be the, the source of his issue. Okay. Um, he got uh, progressively worse where he wasn't using his back legs at all. And because it was new for him, he was still very much trying to be the normal bouncy kitten that he was. He has siblings at home, so he's trying to keep up with his siblings. And at first, we, we saw a lot of activity in the upper limbs. And then um, over, over a course of about a week, the neuromuscular or the neuro, uh, yeah, neuromuscular disease sort of really set in. He kind of started to accept his limitations, and now we're seeing more and more of his uh, almost almost a total body sort of like uh, spasticity that's going on. Oh. Um, he still has bowel. He can still use his bowels. He can still do all that, which is great. He has to be helped into the litter box sometimes, but many times he gets there on his own. So those are always really good positive um, positive advancements for him. So when he went to um, the vet for the second time, because now we're starting to reach out to more specialized vets, people have, have seen this okay. and, and they know how to treat it. Um, they did some laser light therapy. So he completed his laser light therapy. Um, he had about a week of that, a very intensive laser light therapy, and he, they were seeing improvements. They saw improvements in some muscle tone, some muscle reactivity, things like that, which was very, very um, uh, positive for everybody. We got, we got very excited. So then we ask, well, what is this? And once again, nobody is really ready to label him with Manx syndrome because he's not 100% falling into the Manx syndrome category, okay. which is hind leg, usually not being able to urinate, usually not being able to defecate on their own, basically cut off from the waist down. Mm -hmm. And that's not him, really. He does have mobility. He is using his legs in certain situations. So I can see why they're not ready to label him that way, but it's still on the differential list for sure. Okay. Um, more likely he is in, in a situation where he's got some kind of neuromuscular dysfunction, whether it's um, congenital, whether it's something that happened, be we don't think it's trauma because obviously he has not been exposed to any trauma, right. but is it a virus, is it a bacterial, is it, a, you know, is it some other source, a fungal infection in, a, of an, in his spinal cord, you know, who knows what it is. Gotcha. Um, obviously a little uh, foster kitten isn't in a position to have multiple expensive tests like MRIs and things like that. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to treat his symptoms and his symptoms right now are this spasticity of uh, being kind of hyper, hyper extended. Hey, he doesn't have balance. He can't really walk. He doesn't have coordination. Uh, he has a little bit of a head tremor. So all those fall into that same neuro, you know, neuromuscular, uh, neuromuscular dysfunction. So we're hoping if we can give him the support he needs, get his muscles to be strengthened, whatever this is, if it rides out, if he grows out of it, if, it, if the virus ends, if 
if um, we try even like supplements, sometimes in cats, a low potassium can cause neuro neurological huh. dysfunction. If there's something that we finally figure out, we want him to be strong and ready to go. And, and if this is a permanent thing, we need to start now more than, uh, more than later to actually get him to start um, living his life as a, you know, as a kitten that's gonna need some kind of supportive right. device. So in all cases, this is where we need to be with him. He needs to have the he needs to have the support of the uh, of the assistive mobility device. <laughs>
that holds it good and tight. And you do the same thing to the other side. And that way you have a support for the inside for the cat to lay on. You can put a cushion here. Uh, you can do all kinds of things that uh, you may want to do. You could also put another piece of Velcro through this hole. There's enough room that you can fit probably two or three of them through there. I just pull down, put another one through, and then you can have a top strap as well going through the same hole. So that's essentially what we did for Declan. And I hope this helps some other kittens out there that might need an assisted mobility device. See, he is doing it. But also look at how he, his back legs, he also is crossing. He will yeah. cross his back legs. Oh, too. sorry, booby. Don't cross those legs. We gotta train that brain. <laughs> we gotta train that brain. Well, this is what we came up with. <gasps> oh my That goodness. is so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Declan! These are actually Lego wheels. Oh my god. I think that was great. Because I was looking up stroller wheels, uh, skateboarding wheels. I'm like, they're going to be too heavy. That was made on a 3D printer? Yeah. All, that is gorgeous. All these pieces were 3D printed. Oh. So, oh honestly, if because it is something that we would anticipate removing once he is mobile. Right. So, if, if we're just getting him... I have a long enough hallway okay. that we can use a... He doesn't have to turn. We're just, I just want him, mm -hmm. you, you know, don't. it's like when you're at physical therapy and they make you walk up and down that small little hallway. That's all I'm going to be, I'm okay. going to use it with him until we get strong enough on the chest okay. that he doesn't need that and he's just getting the support. Okay. Uh, but this is fabulous. Yeah. It's, it's perfect. And it's, I think it's very easy where you can just lay them in, strap them. Strap yes. Them, two straps Doing over. Doing these two here, that really did. But I just think at the beginning, I think he definitely needs some, some upright support right. right there. Just like some kind of. Unfortunately, Declan wasn't able to use his two front legs to support his weight. So instead, we decided to go ahead and add two additional wheels to the front of the buggy. This should provide him some additional support until he can get used to it. In the interest of time, we went ahead and used super glue instead of E6000. This would allow us to try it out much sooner. What I'm happy about this is, is the fact that he is it's supporting his weight without me supporting his weight. So he can Aww. do this longer. <laughs> it's a wreck. I wrecked. <laughs> no, I think this is right. This, this is, is perfect. That's this right. Is a, this is a good good height. Um, but I, I do. I think that he needs to stay in a harness all the time. We're going to get go used pick, we're gonna to go a pick harness. Up something. Get used to it. And that way when you put him on this, it's, it's just. Not, it's not. It's. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting him in there, just letting him get used to standing in there. Okay. And getting used to being that confined. It is confining. Yeah. yeah um, it get is. him used to that and give him positive reinforcements with his churros and all that. Then once he's good with that, then start having him move to get the the treat. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? That sounds like a good therapy. In the two days since the original footage was taken. Declan has become a little bit more comfortable with his buggy. It will take some time for him to improve. Uh, hopefully we'll have an update for you soon. Until then, please reach out to your local Animal Rescue Foundation and support them if you can. If you want to help Marth, I'll place a donate link in the description below, along with a link to their website. It's an all-volunteer organization, and the funds they receive go to help the stray or abandoned pets. One other way you can help out without spending any money is when you purchase something on Amazon.com, type smile.amazon.com, and set the sporting link to Madison Arf. That's Madison A-R-F. That way, every time you shop smile.amazon.com, a small portion of your purchase goes to help animals in need. I've been doing this myself for several years.
I want to also let you know that the kitten mobility device design that you saw in this video has been uploaded to Thingiverse.com for anyone to download and print. I will place a direct link to it below. It's just one small way that I hope this channel can help make a difference. I will also place links in the description below for the few items I had to purchase to complete the device. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon. Thank you all so much thank for you. being here. Yeah, uh, thank you so thank much you. for yes. doing thank this. Thank you for designing this beautiful assistant device. He's gonna, yeah. he's gonna love it.